This is the Breast Snodgrass Podcast. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Got a very special guest, Aurora Winter, with you guys, best-selling author. Uh, before I talk about Aurora, make sure you go over to the Brett Snodgrass channel on YouTube and subscribe. Slam on that bell so you get all the notifications each week. Today, guys, I have Aurora Winter, who she is an MBA. She's an award-winning best-selling author, TV producer, media coach, ghostwriter, successful serial entrepreneur, and she says that every business leader, every entrepreneur should write a book. She goes through it, teaches you how with her help and how to promote it, how to publish it, and if you are an entrepreneur, you need a book, and let's get to the interview with Aurora Winter. What's going on, Aurora? Hey, it's great to be here with you, Brett. Looking forward to the chat. <laughs> I am too, because this is something I've always been interested in, is putting my message into a book or something that I can give away, that I can sell. And uh, and you say that all entrepreneurs, business leaders, uh, business, you know, if you're in business, you should have a book. And we're going to dive into that. But I always like to start off every interview with a little bit of a deeper question. Some people can answer this easily. Some people cannot. But the question question is, who is Aurora Winter? Ah, that is a stumper. <laughs> I am basically a creative entrepreneur. That's who I am. I'm, uh, and writing is one expression of that. I love writing. And also I am somebody who sees greatness in others. So I love calling that forth and shining a, a light on it. Wow. Wow. That is, that's amazing. I love that answer. Creative. We kind of speak the same language. We love to create and, uh, you know, impact people, make a difference in people's lives. And you are doing that by helping entrepreneurs and business leaders kind of put their words and communicate their message effectively. And like I said, one of the things that you uh, love to talk about is you say that all entrepreneurs, experts, and business leaders should have a story to tell and put it into, into a book. So absolutely. Absolutely. Well, one of my books is this one, Turn Words into Wealth, Blueprint for Your Business Brand and Book. And why I wrote it is because so many people, you know, want to write a book, but they don't understand how to monetize it or they don't understand how to write it. And they just get all tripped up. And three and a half years later, their book is still a manuscript in the drawer. So I thought, OK, let's just help people understand what's the benefit of having a book what kind of book should you write? What's the fastest and easiest and most fun way to write a book? What are some monetization models for uh, for your book? How can you use it to build your business, build your brand? And who else has done this? So I show a bunch of, of models of people that I think most people would be aware of, you know, from Hillary Clinton to Winston Churchill to um, uh, Jeff Walker to Tim Ferriss to Arianna Huffington to myself and my clients and just pull back the curtain and show you the value of having a book and how to monetize the book and how to have fun writing it. Yes, yes, definitely. And I think it's no secret that at some point in all of our lives, we're like, I would love to write a book. I want to leave this, my stories of my life to whoever, to the world, to my grandchildren, whatever that looks like. I think, you know, we all have that inside of us. We should write down the stories of our lives, but it's very hard to do because we don't know where to start. So exactly. when someone comes to you and they say, okay, I do want to write a book. I think it's everybody. I want to write a book. What do you tell them and where should they start? Well, first of all, you don't really want to write a book. Okay. You want to have a published book that you are the author of. And I think like that is actually really helpful to, to know because, you know, Winston Churchill, he's a Pulitzer Prize winning author, but he didn't write like type every word. Mm -hmm. He had editors, he had ghost writers, he had secretaries, he had researchers and Hillary Clinton, all the famous politicians, the movie stars, the business tycoons. Do you think they actually sat there with the blank page <laughs> staring them in the face? Like, no. And now thanks to Zoom and, and other um, platforms, you don't have to write your book. You can speak it. So I have the spoken author method. So what I do with people, first, we reverse engineer it. What's your business? What, it, what are the objections that cost you the sale? What are the stories that move people? And let's just grab all of those stories, make it easy and fast for an entrepreneur or leader. I interview them. They also get the bonus of them. They've got a bunch of podcast <laughs> um, you know, episodes that they can use or video they can slice and dice for social media. And then the result is, a very fun, fast, and easy book that's conversational. Mm. 
that's your stories, that's your expertise. And any leader or entrepreneur of any, you know, of any uh, worth has got stories. They've got expertise. It's not like they need to make this up, but they need to have the support of a structure mm -hmm. to pull it together in, into a really nice book. And uh yeah, I could go on, but I, I have found time and time again for my, for my clients that the, the difference between good and great is being clear on your message. Mm -hmm. And when you are a published author, all of a sudden, all these doors open to you that are not open previously. It's like having a PhD or an MBA as I have, or being a, a dentist, like you, you have a certain extra quantum leap of respect. Mm -hmm as yeah, an author yeah, because yeah, the root of authority yeah. is is author yeah well let's talk about that real quick because in your book turn words into wealth you talk about this message a clear message a million dollar message <laughs> right uh and yeah. i for one i get tripped up on what is my message? I feel like it has to be perfect. And I'm coming up with all these words and I'm looking at thesaurus.com and just trying to be <laughs> super creative with all this. And I get frustrated because at the end of the day is like, I don't know if this message is good and I don't know if it's relatable to people and maybe it's too complicated. So what do you talk about? Like this million dollar message? Talk about that. Yeah, that's such an important thing to have. And what I love to do is my background's in film and television. So I love to teach people the structure. There's a structure behind effective communication. So you're probably familiar from watching movies, the hero's journey. We never tire of the hero's <laughs> journey, but it's always the same structure. There's more than one kind of structure underneath stories. But when people understand the structure, then they can riff on the words. So the words are not as important as that there's a story. So your million dollar message when, when, you know, a lot of people can't even answer the question, what do you do? You know, there's a structure for answering the question, what do you do? Once you know the structure, you can, you know, play with the words a, a little bit. And people really want your energy, mm -hmm. not just the perfect, you know, two dollar word yeah, <laughs> that yeah. you got in the thesaurus that they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> No, definitely. So is this something that you help craft? Because I'm like, I need some help with this. I need some expertise because, or maybe just some affirmation. Is this something that you kind of walk with your clients through? Exactly. I walk them through the various different kinds of structure. Um, I can teach you one real quick that everybody could learn because it's so easy. It doesn't, yeah. need, it doesn't need a longer <laughs> explanation. And then what we do is we take those various structures and we put them in into their book. So for example, if you just really look at the structure behind my latest book, Turn Words Into Wealth, you'll see I've done this. So there's a little section that's myth busting. Mm. You know, the myth is X, the fact is Y. So this is something everybody should have this, um, this little structure in your toolkit. When you know what's costing you the sale or you know what is a common um, misunderstanding of what you're up to, can you just, can you honestly create 180 degrees opposite? So the myth is that most New York Times bestselling authors make most of their money from the books. Mm -hmm. The fact is <laughs> that most New York Times bestselling authors make 85% of their revenue from things besides their books, consulting, mm -hmm. speaking, workshops. So there's an example. But because I know the structure, I can use it on anything. The myth is that Brett doesn't have time to write a book. The fact is, doing it the right way, Brett could easily have time to write a book. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's an example of a structure. Yeah, no, definitely. I love that. And just kind of turning around uh, the miss 180 degrees. And so let's just talk about like, I, I would love to write a book, but I always find myself, I don't have time or the resources. I don't know how. And you talk about that spoken author, right? And how do you do that? Like, how long does that take? And what does that <laughs> kind of look like? Oh, it's so much fun. That's the really cool part of it. I really, I really love doing with doing this with my clients. Well, we specialize at same page publishing. We specialize in best selling award winning books that are done this fun way, the spoken author way. So usually it takes about nine months to have the book baby. And then I love to have another nine months to promote the author and take them up to the next level as a thought leader. Of course, it can be done faster with a shorter book. Uh, we can take out, you know, the 
the thought leader launch part of it. But if I had my way, it would be an 18 month process that works absolutely perfectly. Um, I've done it faster with people who have shorter books or just, you know, have a budget or, or really need to get the book out quickly. Um, and how it usually works well, first we structure the book. So we, we reverse engineer the book because I'm an entrepreneur first and a writer <laughs> second. Uh. So for example, I had some dentist clients, um, doctors, Janice and Justine Doan, they have a dentistry practice in San Diego. And I'm like, okay, before we do the book, tell me about your business. I want to understand your business. And they explained that, you know, they were getting business like every other dentist come in for a free exam, et cetera. And the typical new patient might spend a couple hundred bucks, but they had a lot of expertise doing things like crowns and implants and more complicated dental surgery. And um, if they have a client over a patient over 40, the person could spend $10,000. I'm like a couple hundred bucks, 10,000 plus, <laughs> let's position you yeah. to attract uh, patients over 40. So we wrote the book or I interviewed them and produced the book. It's their book though. Um, Keys to a Healthy Smile After 40, Seven Secrets to Feeling Seven Years Younger. And so that positioned them as the go-to experts in San Diego if you're over 40. And that increased the uh, average transaction enormously. Yeah, it also made them a little bit famous in, in their dentistry <laughs> practice. They were autographing books. They're like top 40 under 40 dentists. And they're like, oh my God, the other dentists think of them like gods now wow, that they wow. have a book. And it took their business from 1.5 to 6 million, being really clear on their message, repositioning and retargeting. And also the other key thing is they had a lot of referrals already, but you know, go see my dentist. What's, where are they? What's their name? People forget, but here's my dentist's book, right. <laughs> read it, you know, and it really helped their referrals. So that would be an example of the kind of thing I like to do for them. I interviewed them over a weekend. Mm. So, you know, we took the, they took the training, they understood what was required. And I, we spent two days together. This was before COVID. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then I went away and my team and I, you know, produced the book. Other clients um, are prefer to talk to me once a week. And usually once a week, we plan the content. And then the second week is like a podcast interview, sort of like this, which then becomes the messy first draft which then my team and I take away and turn into a polished book. So it's really fun. It's really easy. And what, okay, I'm going to say one more thing. And then I really want to hear your questions. But what I love about it is it, it becomes alive. Mm -hmm. Like when you have somebody who's got your back and, and you're working on this, you be in the shower. My clients always text me. I had this great idea in the shower. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Let's add that in. And so as you're working speaking it aloud to somebody who's listening, the quality of the message is impacted by the quality of listening. I mean, mm -hmm. you must know that as, as a podcast host. Yeah. And it just inspires you too, because I've been doing a lot of videos and even podcasts and we have video editors. We're put, putting these together, have our YouTube channel. And then once we see the finished product, this polished thing, like we feel inspired. I'm like, and we're watching ourselves. <laughs> You're like, yeah, exactly. yes, I, I, I get you. <laughs> and that's awesome. Um, and in your book, you talk about the dentist and you talk about increasing the value of a product from this story you even used the term 27x which I'm not sure where you got that from but like really exponentially uh, increasing the value of a product so you have this product just like the dentist but this can add so much value by telling the story of it so talk about this 27x how can a story add value to a product Oh, this was so amazing. I did not pull that number out of the air. It actually comes <laughs> from research that was uh, um, shared in the book, Significant Objects. This was so cool. So they took a hundred different objects and they put them on eBay with a story or without a story. And then they, um, and they were, and then and the stories were written by all kinds of different people. Some were positive, some were negative, but the stories added significance. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, it could have been a potholder and somebody wrote, oh, this is my grandfather's grandmother's potholder. And I remember when she used to make us chocolate chip cookies, mm. et cetera. So, um, and then they said, you know, they were transparent. P.S. This is a experiment. <laughs> 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 yeah. So what, how much more did the potholder and other things sell with a story and without a story? The, it was 27 times. You've wow. already taken my punchline away. So <laughs> people know it's 27 times. Usually when I ask people, they'll say, well, 50% more, maybe double. They'll go as far as double. 
But the fact was that it increased the value by 27 times. Mm. So this is amazing. This is so cool. This means that as a leader, an entrepreneur, an influencer, doubling down on your message could potentially (laughs) increase your revenue by a factor of 27 times. Like this is the highest leverage thing you can do. Yes. Yes. No, I totally agree. And I mean, even I have experience with the podcast, but I'll have people call me up and they'll already know me because they listen to the podcast and I'm like, Oh, who are you? Oh, my name's John. And I talk about my kids and they're like, Oh yeah, I know. I know about your kids. Cause I hear about them on the podcast anyways. Uh, yeah. But it just kind of builds that credibility and, and they know the stories behind that. And let's just talk about again, what a book does. So you've talked about increasing the value, but um, what are some other things that a book will will do for an entrepreneur or a thought leader? Well, a book really helps you get on TED Talks or other stages, speak at conventions, get on podcasts, radio and TV. For example, one of my clients um, when she first was working with me, you know, it's just the very beginning stages. I'm often we're often working with people just as they're like emerging. Uh, but now her TEDx talk has got 4 million views. Mm. I got an email yesterday from another client, Dr. Tracy Thomas, her book's called The Method. And she was just like gushing for a whole page about what a difference it made to her that I was her champion. I said, no, you're going to do a TED talk and then you're going to do another one. And now she's done several and she's on to her onto her second book. So, but the other thing you can use a, a book for which uh, which I shared in a, in a little tiny book called Marketing Fast Track. You can use it as a small, quick, cheap experiment. So there's a book like this that you know takes a year to write and is all well researched and beautifully laid out and award winning book. It's won like five awards now. Turn words into wealth. But um, back in the day, after I got my MBA in 2015. You know, I had taken almost two years off. I had no business. I had no job. I had nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you like, what I'm do like, I do? Well, what? You're like, what do I do with my life? <laughs> what do I do with my life now that I'm all grown up and have an MBA and no revenue? <laughs> <laughs> so I had a one hour, I uh, did a one hour interview with the director of coaching for Tony Robbins, then, uh, then director of coaching for Tony Robbins, Mark Von Muser. And, um, I talked about marketing and I quite liked it. People before that knew me as a coach trainer. So I'm like, oh, I wonder if people would want help with their message, with their marketing, with their million dollar message and with growing their businesses now that I've got an MBA, but we have zero evidence that people want that. So I took that one hour interview, I transcribed it and I turned it into a little book called Marketing Fast Track. And then I offered it to my then very small email list of only 12,000 people. And I gave it to them for free when they had to just pay the shipping and handling, which basically made it a wash. Um, And then I sent them uh, a series of five short videos that I shot in a day (laughs) and then offered them, you know, a business breakthrough call in case they would like some more understanding about how it would work if I helped them with their book or their message. Yeah. And the result was $250,000 of new business in 90 days. Wow. So that little one hour transcribed interview, that, that lead magnet book really helped me go, yeah, I guess people do want help with their marketing and messaging and publishing their books. So it gave me certainty and confidence, but it also was really so lovely to have the physicality of a book like you know, book, you can hold it Mm -hmm. and then follow up with the online digital of the video. And I think people uh, forget, it's so great to have stuff online. We have videos, we have audios, you've got the immediacy of the email, but we forget that people turn off their phones and they turn off their computers, but they can still be reading your book or hand your book to somebody. It's sitting on the shelf. And so I think that is such a smart marketing strategy to have the online and the offline the digital and the physical. I mean, I've had people come to me five years later after they have my book still on their shelf. They're like, oh, I remember you because your book's on my shelf. Would you be <laughs> kind enough to do this and this? Or can I hire you to do that? So yes, um, yes. I've been I've been rambling here. But anyway, so what am I saying? I'm saying that even a small book done quite quickly can provide a huge amount of insight. It can be a small, cheap, fast experiment to see if people would be interested in a new product, a new service, 
And I was kind of blown away by that result. So, um, and, and oh, your listeners can get that book marketing fast track, um, the ebook version, absolutely for free, wherever they like to get their books, Amazon, Apple, Kobo, et cetera. That's awesome. Well, thank you for doing that. We're going to put a description in our uh, show notes too on the Brett Snodgrass channel as well. And that just kind of leads me to my next question. A lot of times when people think of a book, they think it has to be perfect. You're like, oh, if I write something down, it has to be so good and people are going to have to read it. What do you say about that? Like the perfection of if this goes into a book, it has to be perfect and then people never get it done. Uh, people never get it done. Yes. Don't let perfect get in the way of done. <laughs> yeah. um, where people really trip themselves up, I think, or in my experience, is they, they choke their message by trying to perfect the surface of it, mm. the words of it. Whereas if they would learn the structures, like the hero's journey structure, the myth bust structure, the structure of how to talk about what you do, um, there's, there are structures underneath that. So you can lean confidently into those structures and then you don't choke your voice with this energy of perfectionism. And it can, it can be so valuable. The other thing that is so cool, I mean, I'm so grateful to all of the technology that we have now. When my first book came out in 2005, which was endorsed by Dr. Wayne Dyer, my hero. It was so much more difficult to change a book or publish a book or whatever, distribute a book. Mm -hmm. But now if you publish your book and then you get a wonderful endorsement from your hero, mm -hmm. Brett Snodgrass, <laughs> <laughs> you can change the PDF and a day later your book is revised. Mm. So this is really the only way I get books done. I tell myself, you know what, Aurora, if you get some extra, da, 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 you can add it. And my current book turned words into wealth. I mean, every time it wins an award, my poor layout designer, I'm like, sorry, but can you change yeah. the cover again? Because <laughs> the books won another award in that. Wow. Or we list them inside. So yes. And also, sorry, one more thing on that. I, I, if you really are a stand to help your community and your clients and your family and your church, then just get over yourself. Mm. It's not about you being perfect so that they can bow at your altar. Mm. It's about you making a difference. And yeah. if you're, if you're withholding your story or delaying sharing your story, I mean, what could that cost the person who's praying for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It could, you know, Wow. so that's another great uh, tip. I love that. I love that humble answer. Cause again, it's not about you. It's about making a difference in people's lives. And that's why our, my message on this podcast is just how can you be significantly making a difference in people's lives? And, uh, so such, such a good message guys, make sure you get the turn words into wealth. And then also the small book, the marketing fast track, check that out from Aurora. And I want to talk about this to flip it over a little bit. So we're talking about books here, but some people are listening to this and they're like, that's so old school. No one holds a book anymore. They all watch videos. People are on YouTube. You have to do videos. That's what people want to do. One minute clips on TikTok, whatever it is. <laughs> what do you say to that in this modern I, culture? Yeah, I say it's not either or, it's both and. Mm -hmm. And I really help people with their message. So then you can broadcast your message multiple places, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. And if you are an expert or a leader and you don't have a book on Amazon, you are missing out on the number three search engine. Mm, wow. So that's huge, right? So I, I think that the other thing is, well, I am completely biased. <laughs> so don't trust me with this opinion, but I love books. There's just something magical about books. They're like, mm telepathy that can time travel. And I feel like books are, you know, books can last decades or hundreds of years or even thousands of years. Whereas I, I love podcasts. I love video, but they're more like magazines. Mm -hmm. People want the latest they one. Want, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't right? watch like if you got 332 episodes, they don't watch number 10. They watch exactly. 332. So yeah. Even yeah. though the value in number 10 could still be great and maybe take the content of number 10 and put it into your book and people will read it. Yeah, exactly. So. And I love I loved the concept of books because I heard this one time, forget who said it, but it's almost like you have this credibility and people don't give out business cards anymore. But if you give a book, people throw away business cards all the time, but they never throw away a book. Like you said, people still have their books on their shelf. It's so hard to throw away a book, isn't it? 
It's so hard to yeah. throw away a book. And, and it's such a great referral uh, process. And also, if you're warming up a lead or adding more value to a prospect, you give them a book, it's like the, the best thing. Yeah. And it can still say, and the book could even say, you know, go here to get more videos or to get some other value. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, if you're talking to a friend and you're like, oh, you really have to, uh, you have to talk to my dentist or you've got to connect with, with Brad. He's fantastic to do real estate. Then they're like, well, what's his name? Like share the contact. It's like all awkward, but if you just hand a book, they're like, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I love that. And so just you talk about this kind of the new economy. So I want to kind of hit on that a little bit. So uh, number one, you talk about 2005, you published your first book. And I always remember authors talking about, I send my I sent my book to 10 publishers. They all said no. They all rejected me. And it was awful. And finally one said yes. And now I'm in all the bookstores and it's, it's awesome. But the new economy, the new book publishing is completely different. So how easy is it today versus 16 years ago? Right. The myth is that you need a big New York Times publisher. The fact is you do not and you're better <laughs> off self-publishing. Yeah, it's it's absolutely crazy. Sorry, I forgot the precise question. But basically, uh, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and also a writer. Mm -hmm. So as an entrepreneur, I think you're absolutely insane <laughs> to go the traditional publishing method. It's like, it's like yesterday's news. It's mm -hmm. like, it's done. It's an old model. It's a dinosaur. You, you want to own your intellectual property and your lead magnet. You want to be able to modify it or update it. It's your story. It's your expertise. It's your voice. Um, you know, especially nonfiction, which is what I primarily focus on helping my clients, although I do help people with fiction as well, but primarily uh, a nonfiction book for an entrepreneur or a leader is the way to go. So an example of that, David Goggins, you may know him. Yeah. He is he is not a writer. In fact, he's dyslexic. He doesn't really particularly like words and he's not a word wrangler. And he'd be the first to admit that. And he worked with a, with a, another writer. And um, he was told by a New York agent, the worst advice he ever got was this New York agent said, if you self-publish, you know, the most number of copies you'll sell will be 5,000. Mm. So he struggled with that, but he said, you know, it's my story. I don't want to be asking for permission to share my life story, you know, from Penguin Random House or yeah. HarperCollins. Yeah. So he decided to independently publish because self-publishing, we don't say anymore, but mm -hmm independent publishing, but <laughs> listeners know. Um, and the result was within one year, he sold about a million copies of the book and about 600,000 copies of the audio book. Mm -hmm. So roughly if he had not self-published, it would have cost him about $20 million. Wow. And I did listen to that. I was, I was running training for this marathon. I was listening to that. It inspired me. I was listening to audio version. So I, I was one of the 6 million. <laughs> um, yeah. No, that's awesome. Uh, I want to transition into, you, you kind of talk about this new transformation economy. And mm -hmm. what, what does that mean? You talk about that in your book. Yeah, I think people really are hungry for transformation now. Not We're not so much looking for products and services. We're looking for transformation. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how I uh, live that in my business is I transform experts into thought leaders. Mm -hmm. You know, they're looking for that transformation to get the confidence and the certainty of being a published author and having their message down. So what transformation do you provide? What transformation does each of the leaders who are listening to this, you know, provide? So that is the language to explain what you do is I transform, you know, this category of person or business from this to that. Mm -hmm. Right. So when we talk the language of transformation, I think that is really got a, a, a lot of listening mm -hmm. <laughs> active <laughs> in the audience. Right. So you help people go from, from here to here. So what is the, what is the pain or the hell that they're in without your help? And what is the heaven that you take them to? Mm -hmm. So this would be, that's another recipe. It's yeah. another it's why uh, it's probably why the weight loss fitness industry is, is so huge. I mean, there's so much out there, but they're all about transformation, right? Yeah. Right, here's where you are. So what you about are. you? You want to riff with me? Like, what is the transformation that you provide? <sighs> 
Yeah, I mean, this is something, again, it's, a, it's just the clarity of my message. I mean, one thing is uh, that I was a real estate investor for 14 years. I stepped out of the business. I still own the business, uh, but I stepped out a year ago. So I have kind of this freedom, kind of like where you were at of this last year. I have this freedom now. Mm. And, and I love to talk about that is how can you free people? Because I see a lot of entrepreneurs enslaved into their business, whether they have money but no time or time but no money. And purpose, obviously, is one. And I talk about sanity a a lot of them are super stressed out. So the four pillars, I believe, are uh, finances, freedom of finances, freedom of time, freedom of sanity, which is like you're super stressed out, and then freedom of purpose is are you really living out your purpose? So like that's what I love to talk about. I don't know. That might be a book. Maybe you can help me with it. So Oh, that definitely could be uh, turned into a book because you've got the four pillars. You've got some structure to it, and um, I'm sure there's – hero story, you know, yeah. hidden, hidden in, <laughs> as well as some transformation. And it's really for my transformation. I mean, I have all the stories of how I came up with that because I went through all of it. Right. So. Yeah. And all those stories are, are great. People yeah. want yeah. stories. Yeah. In fact, yeah. this is, this is kind of cool. Um, Cause sometimes the more scientific or analytical people go stories, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just get to the point. Yeah. Okay. So how many people who are listening right now could tell, could write down like the 10 commandments. When I do this at a live event, most people go, uh, and I don't even get the first one right. <laughs> but then so just th sit with that for a second. How many of the 10 commandments can you just come up with? And then how many Bible stories can you remember? Mm. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. People have stories all are. kinds of stories. And so this is the power of story. Mm. Stories are memorable. They stick. In mm -hmm. fact, stories, I believe are the DNA of humanity's wisdom. Mm -hmm. So the stories are how we've always transmute, transmitted to the next generation, you know, the hard won wisdom. So sharing just the, the 10 commandments <laughs> is not as valuable as backing it up with the stories. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a neuroscience behind that. And that's the other thing I really love about helping people tell their stories and then, you know, we turn it into a book, but then they've also got the audios and the, and the videos to, to create a podcast or social media. I mean, books are fairly recent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Gutenberg printing press was only invented in the 1400s. Yeah. So, there's nothing wrong with telling your story around the campfire or around the Zoom call mm -hmm. and then having the, that distilled and, and clarified. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's a natural way for us to communicate. And, and now that we have the ability to capture that on video, on audio, and then also in text and turn it into a book, I mean, that's magic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And, uh, and again, uh, just, you know, we're talking about telling stories and I'd love to talk to you after this, just on my personal is telling my story with all that. Um, uh, Rora, we're about out of time with this interview, but one last thing I want to just kind of talk about is this is there's one thing to write a book. We get the information and we put this book together and it's awesome. It's amazing. Our, all the stories are in there, but then how do we, no one reads it. No one knows about it. Like <laughs> that's, that's the other piece, right? Cause you spend so much time writing the book, but then people forget about the marketing of the book. Like how do you get it out there? Talk to us about that. Well, that's the, the one of the reasons why I really like to put my arms around the whole project, because it just hurts my heart when people put a lot of effort into their book and then they self-publish it and then crickets. So um, there's two, well, at least two things to think about with that. One is... Um, don't just write a book and think that's the end of the process. Think it, it's more like having a baby. <laughs> okay, you've had the baby. Now what? Right? You need to have the playpen ready and you need to have a plan. I mean, the, the, a book has its own energy, but publishing a book is like the birth of a baby. You're, you're not done yet. But how can we really feel excited about that? Well, bake the book into your marketing plan for your overall business. So every time I have published a book, I've learned a lot about book publishing since 2005 when I started on this journey. And I was so innocent at the beginning. My first published book is called From Heartbreak to Happiness. And it was my, my gift to other grieving people. I had no intention of starting a business. I was in <laughs> film and television and I was happy to go back to being a film and TV writer producer. Um, but that book brought people to me and I'm like, oh, I see this. I see how books work with businesses. Um, and eventually I kind of figured this out and then uh, uh, just tightened the learning curve for my for my clients so they don't have to make all of my key mistakes that I made. So when you um, 
have a business in mind, whether you're a speaker like David Goggins, or whether you've got a real estate company or a dentistry company, or you want to write a whole series of books, your book is one element in a marketing funnel. So your business should be a machine that you put inputs into, and then it creates the outputs that you desire. So some of my clients are, you know, they're writing books with me, but their main focus is actually raising capital. So I've had people, my average client goes from raising zero to raising $7 million mm-hmm. after working with me and getting clear on their, on their message. Wow. And they may or may not ever get their book done, but <laughs> that's not relevant because they've got their message, their million dollar message mm-hmm. or their $7 million message as, yeah. as the case, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. as the case may be. So, so as a business owner, Owner, what is your business? I don't think that just one book is not a business. Mm-hmm. If you want to be a fiction author, like I'm writing uh, fiction as well, uh, you need to write a book series. But for most people who already have a seven or eight figure business, or at least a six figure business, if your book is uh, bringing you 27x or even 2x <laughs> as a lead magnet, as a credibility builder, as a referral machine, then it um, automatically makes sense not to bury the book after you've published it, but to promote it and let it work hard for you. Yeah. And it also just gives you something to promote. It's like, you know, you're on this podcast, you have a book. It's like you reach out to these other podcasts and you talk about your business, but it's, again, it's something that you can promote, something you can leave behind. It's an action step. Oh, go get my book and something, you know, it's not just the interview and then that's it, right? You're always trying to leave something behind and uh, have the action step. So. And, and add more value. So the people who listen to this who are like, oh, that sounds interesting. I want to know more about Aurora. You know, they can read Turn Words into Wealth and they can see all the answers to the questions that we didn't have time to get to. Yeah. Well, let's just kind of talk about that then. So how can people get a hold of you? Where do they get the book? Go from there. (laughs) Okay, great. Well, the best place to connect with me is my website, which is my name, auroraunter.com. So A-U-R-O-R-A and then winter like the season. And if people want to explore having uh, my help to write and publish their book, they can sign up for a business breakthrough call there. It's free, no obligation. And we kind of go from there. Um, If you'd like to learn more about what we've talked about and actually see these business models, and I would recommend uh, my book, Turn Words Into Wealth, blueprint for your business brand and book, which is available on Amazon, on Apple, on Kobo, wherever books are sold. And as a free gift, my little book, Uh, marketing fast track is available for free and it shows you how a little book can launch a new business. And that, that book actually did generate $250,000 of new business in 90 days, not from book sales, from building my (laughs) business, just to be clear there. Um, So that uh, that'll still be available for free as an ebook when this is broadcast. Great. We're going to put that in our description, guys, on the Breast Nodgrass YouTube channel. Check that out with Aurora Winter. And Aurora, thank you so much. I always like to end every show with a fire round. I have three questions for you. So here's number one. Your favorite your favorite recently read book. Oh, my gosh. I'm reading so many books at once. <laughs> Actually, I think that Terry Pratchett's book, um, Going Postal, is my favorite recently read book. Okay, awesome. I have to get that. I always, I always ask that question so I can get the book, uh, my <laughs> personal collection. So, uh, number two, favorite author that you follow? Oh, well, that I follow, Brandon Sanderson. He wrote Mistborn. I'm also rereading Mistborn for the second time with my pen, <laughs> <laughs> taking notes because he's such a great fantasy writer. Both of those books are fiction. Mm. Cool. All right, last one. A favorite client that you have worked with? Ah, well, I am working with Michael Stockham right now, who is a lawyer in Texas, and he's fantastic. We are taking what we thought was going to be a fairly straightforward business book, and we're creating it so that it has the structure of a movie. Ooh, mm, wow. <laughs> Just to add an extra <laughs> layer of complication. That, and his book that. is, uh, the working title is Confessions of an Accidental Lawyer. Mm. Awesome. I can't wait. And that's, I can't wait. I'm going to get that one too when that comes out. Sounds good. Well, that's all I got with Aurora Winter. Thank you so much for being on the Breast Snowgrass podcast today, Aurora. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.
so much for checking out the Brett Snodgrass channel. If you like this video, please slam on that like button. And if you really like it, then subscribe to our channel here. And remember to leave us a comment below, and I'm going to try my hardest to reply to all the comments. Thank you guys so much. This is why I do what I do. Every single week, I come out with content that focuses on success, freedom, and living out your purpose. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.